2020 brought a lot of innovation. Good morning, YouTube. I'm trying a slightly different look here because of the Christmas tree. There's a fireplace behind me, but I couldn't figure out how to get it all in there. So the Christmas tree is good enough for now. 2020 is coming to a close. Thank God. Which means all of us running shoe YouTubers are looking at our top picks from 2020. And I'm gonna get to that video, but today I wanna talk about something a little bit different. Every year we hope that companies are gonna get more innovative, that they're gonna give us new and exciting products and listen to our complaints and our opinions from the running shoes the previous year. So I thought it would be cool to take a look at every company that I've run in in 2020 and talk about the innovation from that brand. And then at the end, I'll talk about what brand or brands I think were the most innovative of the year. Before we get started today, I do wanna let you guys know that the majority of the shoes in this video were provided to me for review. However, I was not paid to make any of these reviews and all of my thoughts are my own. All right, so we're gonna start with an honorable mention and that is Atreyu Running Company. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I love this company and they're a brand new company for 2020. So obviously looking at this, there's not a ton of crazy tech here at all. In fact, it's a pretty simple shoe, but what makes it innovative is their business model. So basically you can sign up for a subscription plan and you can get a new shoe every one, two, three months, I believe for a very low price. And when I say very low, I mean it's under $100. I think that's super innovative. We weren't seeing anything like that from any other running shoe brands and Atreyu took it and ran with it. And a lot of people have been having very positive experiences. Now the next brand I'm gonna talk about is Skechers and they really have made waves from before 2020. Uh, but what I think was cool was the shoe they came out with, the Skechers Speed Elite. Now this shoe uses a carbon fiber plate and it uses their Hyperverse foam, which we have seen carbon fiber plates before. And we've also seen Hyperverse like back in 2019. But what makes this shoe cool is the way that they've decided to place the carbon plate. Before the Speed Elite, we were seeing a lot of full length carbon plated shoes, but this shoe just has a very interesting butterfly looking plate in the forefoot. I'll try to get a picture and show you guys. I thought that was a really cool and innovative way to look at carbon plates. Maybe you don't necessarily need a full length one to go fast and this shoe certainly is fast. So kudos to Skechers for doing something different with carbon plated shoes and standing out in a sea of carbon. All right, next up on my list is Brooks. In recent years, Brooks has kind of gotten a little bit of crap for not being super innovative, using the same DNA loft that they always do, and just kind of being boring in terms of technology and shoes and not being very innovative. Well, in 2020, they came out with a very cool nitrogen infused foam called DNA Flash. That's what you see here, this big slab of yellow foam. We also see it in the Hyperion Tempo. Those are the two shoes that have the flash foam right now. And while I didn't really like the Hyperion Tempo, I do really like the Hyperion Elite, despite it giving me blisters but that's a different story. But despite my issues with it, a lot of people are really enjoying this shoe and this foam. I think it's cool when a company can listen to its customers and realize, hey, all right, we gotta figure something out here. We gotta do something a little bit different and take the plunge and take the step and the risk. And sometimes it works out in your favor. Next up. Got Nike. Yeah, 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 the Alpha Fly, I don't have it, but I have the Tempo Next Percent. And I think the most innovative technology to come out of Nike in 2020 is in both the Alpha Fly and the Tempo Next Percent, and that is the Air Zoom units in the forefoot of the shoe. Zoom units have been used in Nike shoes for decades, but we've never really seen them to this degree in a running shoe. Sure, we have these full length or forefoot Zoom units that are kind of hidden in the shoe that we've seen in like the Pegasus and the Vol marrow, but we've never had them exposed and we've never had them this intense. When you do compress these zoom units in your stride, you feel an immense push forward. When I think of these zoom units, I think of basketball shoes and now we got them in running shoes. Nike's done a decent job in 2020 and I'm really not sure what else they could possibly do in 2021, but they're Nike, so I'm sure they'll do something. Next brand on the list, 
is New Balance. Now, I'm pretty sure we started to see fuel cell foam in the end of 2019, but they really perfected it, in my opinion, in 2020, especially in shoes like the TC and in their premium carbon racer, the RC. It's true that every shoe in the fuel cell line kind of feels different, uh, but in the TC and in the RC, I think it feels the best. It's extremely soft and super responsive. Even if they're using a foam that they came out with last year, perfecting it still makes it more innovative. Another cool thing, which we have not seen from any other brand that I know of, is this really nice Dynaride outsole. And it did a really nice job because it's good with traction, it doesn't get in the way of the ride of the shoe. I gotta say, I want them to put this in more shoes. And now let's talk about Hoka. First, I wanna talk about this shoe here, the Clifton Edge. Obviously, there's no other shoes that look like this on the market. And I think it's cool that Hoka tried to step out of the box and make something different. While this shoe won't work for everybody, and if you're looking for a traditional Clifton, you're certainly not gonna find it here, I think what they did with this was really cool and they super stepped out of the box. I'm hoping that the Clifton Edge is not just a one and done and that Hoka tries to improve on this and expand the innovation further in 2021. Another quick thing that I do wanna mention from Hoka is that it's starting to become a brand that people are looking at and saying, well, they kinda of need to do something else with their foam. It can't just be standard EVA. So in the Clifton Edge, they do have a slightly more responsive altered foam there. But in their racing shoe, the Rocket X, which debuted at the Olympic marathon trials in February, 2020, but people weren't able to get their hands on until like late this summer, I think. Uh, they're using a new and improved EVA. So like, all right, we're still using EVA. It's kind of like boring, but this is much better than the standard that they have been using. So I got to give it to Hoka for listening to its customers and trying a slightly different approach to the EVA midsole. Now, the two brands that I think are the most innovative, it's a toss up here. I can't really pick a winner. I feel like they both have been so innovative and it's a tie but we'll talk first about Saucony. If you guys know me, you know I love this shoe. First, Saucony came out with three new foams, all derived from the same concept, but different. Three different foams. We have regular Power Run, which we see in the Ride 13 and in the Kinvara. Then you have the Power Run Plus, which you see in the Triumph series and in the Freedom series, I believe. And then you have Power Run PB, which is their race-based or more performance-based foam, and that's in the Speed and in the Endorphin. Pro. Now what makes this so cool is that you have three different foams to choose from and they all serve a different purpose, but they all feel great. Each one provides protection and help while you're running. And the best part is that it's a major, major improvement over Everrun and the other foams that they've been using in the past. Not only did they come out with these new foams, but they also came out with speed roll technology, which is basically just a rocker tech to help you roll forward in your stride and give you that much more assistance. I have loved every Saucony issue that I've tried this year. I think they hit it out of the park and oh man, it's just, this shoe's too good. In terms of just the shoes in general, Saucony's on top this year. Can you guys guess what brand I'm gonna talk about now? Hmm. Well, it's time to talk about Asics. They were on top of the running game and then people wanted something to excite them, something new, something innovative. I got a lot of crap from people about just being boring shoes. And some would say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think there's something to be said for trying something new and trying to gain more customers rather than just maintaining the ones you already have. And I really think that ASICs came out swinging in 2020. Oh, you guys are bored of flight foam? We'll try the Flight Foam Blast. This foam is a game changer on the market, not just for ASICs, but for running shoes in general. This is a bouncy trampoline-like foam. I think this is their most innovative shoe in years. I'd love to see this Flight Foam Blast and this much of it now, not like the Dyna Blast has less and the Road Blast has less. I wanna see this much Flight Foam in a more stable package. People complain that ASIC shoes weren't fun to run in and I tell them, well, then you've never tried the Nova Blast, honey. Not only did ASICs innovate their foam for 2020, but they also got into the carbon plated running shoe game. And what's cool about the placement of this carbon plate is that it's a lot different from the other ones on the market. Basically, in a lot of other carbon plated shoes, the 
plate sits in the middle in between two layers of foam. This one is bottom loaded, so it's basically right above the outsole. And I like that ASICS did this different because it gives people more options. So that's the number two thing that they did in 2020. And the number three thing they did is they made light shoes. How cool is this? People were saying ASICS shoes are too bulky, they're too this, they're too that. I want a little bit less. Sure, I want some stability, but I don't need all this bulk and this mess. And same thing with the Nimbus, it's just too much shoe. So they made them lighter while still keeping the original versions for people who are loyal to that shoe. And another cool thing about both these shoes is that they're eco-friendly. So that's something that I would love to see from more companies, and I'm impressed with ASICS, that they were able to make these shoes more innovative and also be a little green. So because of that, it's really a toss-up between ASICS and Saucony for most innovation. I say for the best shoes, the most innovative shoes, you'd go with Saucony. And for the most attempts to be innovative and creative and new and improved, I'd go with ASICS. Both did a fantastic job in 2020 and you really have to commend them for listening to their customers. The key is for them to stay on top of their game in 2021. So we're gonna have to find out how they do. Well guys, that includes my video of the most innovative brands of 2020. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Look at all these. I have another video for you guys on Sunday and stay tuned because in the coming weeks, I will be doing a video on my favorite running shoes of 2020. But in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time.